Hey guys, Marion here. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. <laughs> and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys all of the Jewish food I could find at Trader Joe's. That's right, I went to Trader Joe's and anything I saw that was a Jewish food, I put it in my car. I put it in my car. And now I'm gonna eat it for you guys. I thought it'd be really fun to showcase how much Jewish food there actually is at Trader Joe's. And I thought we could kind of decide whether it's actually good or not. So uh, let's jump in. First, a tiny little caveat, maybe not so tiny. This is not a kosher food at Trader Joe's video, although I could make one if you want me to. This is a Jewish food at Trader Joe's video. And at the end, I'll kind of talk more about that, but let's get into the food. And I think I'm gonna start with something, what should I start with? Oh, a tried and true favorite. Okay, so Trader Joe's has latkes. Some Jewish people pronounce them latkes. I am not one of those people. My dog just tap danced in the kitchen. Hi, Rocky. Okay, so Trader Joe's makes latkes. I always get them for Hanukkah each year because they're really, really good. This is what they look like. Do they look like a traditional latka? I'm gonna try and rate everything based on look and taste, right? Okay, does it look like a latka? Not really, it kinda looks more like a hash brown if we're being honest. What's the difference? A latka, you should be able to see the strands of potato. I mean, that's not written in the Bible. That's just like traditionally how it's done. You can see like people, little Jewish old ladies hand grate their latkes and then fry them up um, versus a hash brown, which is like more like mashed potato that's fried almost, machine made, you know what I mean? Okay, let's taste. I love, love the Trader Joe's latka and I'll tell you why, it's got really good flavor. I don't know if they have onions in it or what spices exactly are in it. Yeah, onions. Rock, you need to stop tap dancing in my video. Um, the flavor on these tastes like a traditional latka and I give major props for that. Speaking of flavoring, let's pull out the everything spice, everything but the bagel. I think, let me know if I'm wrong, I think Trader Joe's was one of the first places to make everything spice. My kids put it on everything, <laughs> and I mean everything. So I definitely have a lot of these in my house, so I was happy to buy more for the, for the cause of the video. Um, I was happy to buy all of this for the video, but I thought I would sprinkle some on the latka as a good way to tell you guys about it. Delicious. And let me tell you why. I have bought everything spiced at other places, lots of other places. And sometimes there's too much salt and too many like small, tiny little particles. The particles and the everything spice is so good. Why am I talking about everything spice in a Jewish video? Because like the Jewish deli, the everything bagel, very Jewish. Okay, let's move on to something I've been really waiting to try because it's new. It's the Middle Eastern kebabs. So I counted Israeli and Middle Eastern food. Also, did I have Persian food? I could have also thrown in Persian food because to me that's all Jewish. I don't know, you can weigh in in the comments what you think about this. This is not kosher. None of Trader Joe's packaged meat products like this are kosher. Trader Joe's does sell kosher meat, usually Empire brand. I think they have one other one over the holidays. They sell um, like beef products. I think they're, what are they, Teva? Teva? What's it called? I had it in my last video. They have Empire Chicken throughout the year and then they have um, brisket and other meats like over the high holidays. This kind of stuff is never kosher, but I thought I'd try it because um, it's Jewish, or at least Israeli, Middle Eastern. And I've been very excited about it because it's new. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's a ground beef kebab. I would say, is it the most appetizing looking piece of meat? I don't know. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, the flavor is there. I love the flavor. Obviously, I'm gonna top my latke with this. The flavor is really good. Mm. But, one comment I must make negative is the texture is slightly more like a hot doggy kind of processed meat texture versus if you went to a Middle Eastern restaurant or Israeli restaurant, Jewish restaurant, and ordered kebabs, it would really be fresh ground beef. 
Sorry, Trader Joe's, gotta say. Okay, let's move on to falafels. These are vegan and gluten free. I love falafel, but I usually like it like in a pita with all the fixins. I don't really love falafel plain, but for the sake of the video and for you guys, I'm gonna try it. Okay, ready? Mmm. Mmm, it's okay. It almost has too much flavor. A little bit dry. Honestly, falafel balls just kind of taste that way to me. But this is way better than the Target brand. Target has a brand of falafels that are terrible. Um, so this is actually not bad. Not my favorite, but a little too like spicy, herby, vegetable-y. You can taste that a little bit. But honestly, no one does fresh falafels like they do in Israel. <sighs> so good and I'm sure the rest of the Middle East but yeah I mean obviously it doesn't compare to fresh and like you know that's a little more processed you can like taste the insides a little bit more like tell what's going on in there which I don't like as much but it's okay not bad in a pinch I say go for it okay palate cleanser cool. and now let's move on okay Trader Joe's is known for the bomba. I've read an article, I'm sure it's true, that it's actually made in the same facility as regular bomba. Let me show you regular bomba. Do I have it? I usually have bomba. I'm out today, it's the end of the week, but um, the packaging looks totally different. Actually, I wonder if it says where it's made. Okay, so it's kosher, it is kosher. Kosher Parv, chief rabbinate of Kiryat Gat. Kiryat Gat is in Israel, so I would not be surprised if the regular Bomba factory was also in Kiryat Bot and that this Kiryat got and that um, Trader Joe's just has a repackaging of it. Is it less expensive than regular Bomba? It depends where you buy it. But I think yes because this was $2.99 and I usually get my Bomba at either the grocery store or Giant. I feel like it's the grocery store or Giant, the grocery store or Target and it's usually $3.99. Yes bud? Okay come go back downstairs. Tastes exactly the same. In fact, Max, come here. I need you to do a taste test. This is the Trader Joe's Bomba. I want you to tell me if it tastes any different than regular Bomba, because I think it's exactly the same. Come here, tell the people. No, it's not. It's not the same? I mean it is. It is the same, I think so too. Which one do you like better? Or are they just the same? Uh, I like, I uh, like, the blue one. Blue Bamba, that's the regular Bamba. But Max also loves what he loves. I'm sure he would not know the difference if I put it in his lunch, which I couldn't because it's a peanut product. Bamba's made of peanuts. Okay, moving on. Cheese balances. Okay, I've, no, I've had these before and they're not my favorite, but for the sake of the video, I brought them here. Also, I know what you're thinking. Mary, you just had meat and now you're eating cheese. Yes, <laughs> um, we'll get to that at the end of the video. Okay, cheese blintzes. So Blintz's is a very Jewish food, but every Jewish mama and grandma sort of has their own recipe. And when you make fresh Blintz's, which I do on Shavuot, the Blintz pancake, I mean, no frozen pancake can compare. Okay, Max, do you wanna try a Blintz? Uh, no. No, okay, here it is. This is, oh my goodness, the cheese just fell out. This is what it looks like inside. Normally, Max, don't touch the camera. Normally the cheese filling, normally the cheese filling is a little more liquidy, I would say. Like this is a very hard cheese, almost like a cottage cheese. It should be, I think, more like um, a smooth cheese. Okay. Oh God. I really don't like it. Oh. Okay, <laughs> sorry. The pancake part is fine. It's um, got a good honey sweetness, but the cheese inside, I just don't get. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Pancake is fine, cheese inside, terrible. Not worth it, not like a traditional cheese blintz, but I will say, making a traditional cheese blintz is extremely time consuming, <laughs> so it is a fast hack. Okay, now we're in the dessert world, but before we culminate this video, I got one, two more things left to taste. You're welcome to help me taste them. This is, organic tahini. What do you guys think? Look at all that. Look at all that separation. We gotta stir this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so tahini is a Middle Eastern 
I don't know if I would call it a dip. It's like a sauce, I guess. It's used to make hummus and lots of other dips and sauces, and you can also bake with it. I have a really good tahini cookie recipe, um, but it's also used like on falafel as a topping. Okay, so I am I haven't fully fully stirred it, but to give you a taste. Oh, by the way, ground tahini is made from sesame seeds, so it tastes like sesame. Okay, sorry, I got little ones here not here on my camera. Um, so tahini um, when fresh and good like this. So good. You can tip, you can top meats with it. You can, like I said, bake with it. There's so much you can do with it. Um, but it's really good, like fresh from the jar when you refrigerate it, hardens and I don't know. But this is really, really good. I definitely now am inspired to make my tahini cookies. Okay, speaking of cookies, we're ending with rugelach. Rugelach is a very traditional Ashkenazi cookie. These are cinnamon nut rugelach with a traditional cream cheese a traditional cream cheese pastry with walnuts. It is kosher. Um, I made rugelach not that long ago. It, they're pretty easy to make, but all like the filling and the folding and the everything, it's a little bit of a process. So these very much look like bakery rugelach to me. They smell really good. They've got the sugar topping. They're okay. I don't know why they have a weird aftertaste to me. <laughs> Are these bad? What's going on? Best by 1020. No, they still should be good. I wonder if they're just a little past their prime. And they're okay. When you get a fresh rugelach, oh my goodness, there's a place in Israel, in the Shuk in Jerusalem, called Marzipan. Their rugelach are like nothing else you've ever tasted. When you go to a Jewish deli or a Jewish bakery, they usually have rugelach, but they don't taste very like fresh and delicious. It's hard to come across like a warm, fresh, delicious rugelach. This tastes more like the ba the bakery's like kind of old rugelach, but it's not that good. You know what it is? There's like an apple pie filling in this. It says cinnamon nut, but I swear it tastes like apple. It says it's got a raspberry base. I don't know. Guys, sorry to end on such a downer, but this is not my favorite. Oh well, they tried. Anyways, that is my haul, my mukbang, my eating through my way through all the Jewish food that I could find this week at Trader Joe's. Let me know what you guys think. Do you want to see more? Are you curious? And I'll end with a little asterisk about kosher. So if I did what's kosher at Trader Joe's, that'd be a whole different video. There's tons of kosher products at Trader Joe's. There's Asian food, Italian food, like tons of stuff that's marked kosher. If you want to know if something is kosher, one of the ways to look is you see that u with a circle around it and a d that means kosher dairy uh, some people have a higher level of kosher which means they don't accept that signature they want an even stricter one um i don't think i'll have an even stricter one here but i'll do it i have done a whole separate video about what kosher means in our family we keep kosher style which means um i don't eat like I won't have any pork products, shellfish, that kind of stuff. We don't bring it in the house. And I don't really mix milk and meat together, but I'm not like, like for this example, like I don't wait two hours between milk and meat. I wouldn't like put a blintz on top of a kebab, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it comes, like at my levels of kashru have oh, really- this, 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 wait. Is that Zachary? Yeah, that was Zachary. My levels of kashrut have ebbed and flowed over the years. Me and my husband are in a partnership, and all that relationship has changed how we keep kosher. Yes, but why? Why? Oh. <laughs> so basically, I'm just saying, don't take my word for it. Like, figure out what kosher means to you and how it applies to your life. But anyway, so like I said, this isn't a what's kosher at Trader Joe's video. It's a Jewish food at Trader Joe's video. Should I do a what's kosher at Trader Joe's and just take you around with me? Let me know. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my content. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Yeah!